All right, the intent of this video is to review for you guys chapter four and five, the laws of supply and demand, and put them together into chapter six, which is the price equilibrium. So if you remember correctly, the law of demand states that the less something costs, the more you're willing to buy of it. And that makes sense. You, you buy things when they are cheaper. So as the price falls, your quantity that you are willing to buy goes up. Each time the price drops, quantity goes up. So what we end up with is a demand curve that slopes down and to the right. Supply is a little different. Um, it's a little trickier, but think about it from the perspective of the producer. If something becomes higher in price, it's more profitable, so they're willing to make more. In other words, if the price of something goes up, they increase their supply of it, their quantity supplied of it, because it's more profitable and they're making more money. Up, over. So what you end up with here is a curve which slopes up and to the right. And that's our supply curve. You want a real life example? Think about this. Alcohol distilleries right now, places that are used to making things like vodka. What have they started making? They've changed their production to focus on hand sanitizer. Why? Because hand sanitizer is really expensive right now, so they know I can make money off of this. As a result, the supply of hand sanitizer, or the quantity supplied of hand sanitizer has increased as the price has. All right. Now, when we put the two graphs together, this is the new concept. And what I want you guys to understand is this point right here. This is called the price equilibrium. And it is the point at which price, or, uh, quantity supplied and quantity demanded are the same. It is efficient. And the key point is efficiency because remember, the problem we are trying to solve with economics is scarcity. We don't want to waste scarce resources. So we want the exact number of items that we're supplying to be the same as the exact number of items that are demanded because then there's no waste. All right? That's the price businesses need to find to sell everything they have, be profitable, and not have any waste. If they set the price too low, all right? So right now the price is right here. If they set the price too low, notice what happens. The quantity supplied is over here. It's not as profitable, so they're not willing to sell as much. But the quantity demanded on this demand curve is all the way up here, considerably higher. That's because people are like, oh, it's cheap, I'm going to buy it. Therefore, this area is what is referred to as a shortage. All right? Now, what if the business sets the price too high? Let's say they set it up here. If the price of something is that high, businesses are like, man, I'm going to sell this like crazy because I'm going to make money off of it. But people think, oh, I'm not willing to pay that price. And so what you end up with is quantity demanded that is, let me erase some of this. A quantity demanded that is way back here, but a quantity supplied that is way over here. In this case, your quantity supplied is considerably higher than your quantity demanded. This one is called a surplus. Now, notice both are wasteful. Neither one solves scarcity. In this case, you're wasting resources producing something no one wants, so you have a surplus. That's extra. If we make too much of something, it's waste. We could have used those resources on something else. And here we have a shortage. The whole issue we're trying to solve is scarcity. If there's not enough of something and people want more of it, we're just making the scarcity worse. So in both cases, we're not solving the issue of scarcity. The job of the business and the consumer are to find that ideal point in the middle called the price equilibrium. And this is where the business will set its price at because it's where the business will ensure that it sells everything it has and have none left over and there will be no unsatisfied consumers. So remember, this point is efficient because it solves the problem of scarcity. Another important point, it's also flexible. If something changes in society, what can the business do? They can simply adjust their price. Let me give you one more quick example. We're almost done. 
let's say your original price equilibrium is here. This is the demand curve, this is the supply curve. Now, you learned about demand shifters last chapter. One of them was consumer expectations. If consumers expect something to change in the economy, suddenly their demand for something changes. COVID-19, coronavirus, perfect example. Let's say that people expect to need more hand sanitizer. What happens for the demand of hand sanitizer? The entire curve shifts. People are willing to buy more no matter what the price is because they're like, we suddenly need this. Our expectation is we need this to stay safe. So now the demand curve is all the way over here. Notice what happened to the price equilibrium. It's gone up. That makes sense. More people want it, price is higher, businesses adjust their price, new price equilibrium. And like we said before, now businesses are going to start creating more hand sanitizer because it's more profitable. That's flexibility. Quick review. In the command system, we talked about how the government set prices. Here, the market is setting the price. Something changes, businesses adjust. If the government sets this price, they can get it completely wrong, which is why we end up with the shortage and surplus. Because remember, the government lacks the information they need to make effective decisions. And we're actually seeing a little bit of that right now. The government is trying to make personal protective equipment for hospitals. They're trying to make sure it gets distributed. And what is happening? We have a massive shortage. Why? Because the government doesn't have all the effective information it needs, so it's not necessarily great at reacting to that change. It'll probably do so eventually, um, but we're having some issues as they lack information. All right, the last thing to remember about this point, this price equilibrium is neutral. It does not favor the producer or the consumer because neither one decides where it is set. Um, the only time that can be thrown off is if you have something like a monopoly where one producer is setting the price. But normally, the price is the result of com producers competing with each other. And so as a result, they don't get to decide it. Neither does the consumer. It's neutral. It doesn't favor either side. Basic intro to Chapter 6. I'll be giving you guys more information on price ceilings and price floors in the upcoming days. Stay safe.